today we're going to finally do the colorful bird collage, the one that I talked about when I was making the prints, a toucan bird collage. So you might have remembered that I did these prints specifically for this layout, and today we're going to finally do it. Welcome back friends. So today we're finally going to get to the mosaic part of the toucan bird. The mosaic part is going to be his body and his beak. So there's a lot of mosaic that has to be done. Let's stop talking and let's get started. So these papers I created a couple of months ago, there's a video I will put up in the upper right hand corner and we're just going to do a mosaic pattern and we're going to create his body. So we're going to start with his black feathers and there's a lot of highlight there. So I have different shades of dark papers and we're going to cut them out into triangles and whatnot and we're going to adhere it with some gloss gel medium from Liquitex. I like Liquitex better because I think it dries the most transparent when there's a buildup because I tend to use a lot of it and there's a lot of buildup in the end. And that's the only reason why I prefer that brand. Others, like even Mod, Mod Podge, um, are just perfectly fine if you're not going to be, you know, really, really building up like I do. So as you'll see, I am just cutting the papers in sometimes triangles and sometimes odd shapes just to put the puzzle together and in the end it looks like a mosaic. So when I was creating these dark papers there was some residual paint on the plate you know just other colors and it really added to the paper and I think it adds a little bit of reflection in his feathers. You know, black feathers are not just, you know, matte feathers. They have a little bit of sheen to them. And that gives that little bit of reflection, I think. Okay, so I have some other papers that have even lighter areas like this one. So I just feel that maybe some areas just need something a little bit different and I'm not being too literal with my reference materials I'm just you know I'm just going for it as long as long as the end product you can tell it's a toucan I'm happy I'm not looking to be doing a realistic toucan this is an abstraction of a toucan obviously it's a mosaic he's he's going to not have all of you know the feather detail and all of that this is more of an abstraction so I can get a little bit creative with the colors that I use as long as I'm indicating highlight and shadow while I'm doing this I'm also trying to think about how the feathers actually would look if I was painting this and try to get the points of the triangle in you know in that direction so that I'm still getting that sort of effect. I don't know if that makes any sense but um, that's the tricky part you know some of it you, you know it's solid areas and it's okay to just be um, random about it but in other areas like that back side of his head, I wanted to actually indicate where you actually saw some, some pointed feathers coming down.
a lot of times I get bored with a certain area, so then I switch to another color. So here's some of the yellows that I created. You'll see some of his, his chest area actually has a little bit of green. So I did that one that has a little bit of, um, I think it's like a chromium or maybe even green gold. And that way I can indicate that part of that sort of darker yellow. I also made some of these sort of reddish brown, not quite burgundy colors um, for certain parts of his body. You'll see on my reference piece that I do have those kinds of colors there. So um, I thought it was important that I keep to the color palette of my reference. And I, I did manage to get some very organic um, papers that had just the right colors in them, the right shades. There, were, there was even like a little bit of that teal color. It's a very pale teal that you also see in his beak. And some of that was also in the yellow area. So I, I put a little piece in there. Why not? And as you can see, sometimes I have to deal with very, very tiny pieces. Especially towards the end. You'll see, I have to fill in really, really tiny pieces towards the end. It's like putting a puzzle together for sure. So of course this is sped up, but I do try to work fast. I try not to take too many breaks while I'm doing this because it, I might not go back to it right away. So I really had every intention of making sure that I got this done today, that day, I was not going to stop until this was finished. And I was doing this on a Saturday and I thought, you know, I was, I was the only one there and I thought I'm really going to get a lot done because I'm all alone and there's nobody to distract me. The next thing I know, somebody's knocking at the door <laughs> and he had an appointment with someone who was not there. And so I was interrupted for a good, I would say, hour and a half. They were really nice guys. They wanted to know all about my artwork. It was actually a very fun visit. But um, this all just kind of sat there. And, and I broke my rule about taking a break. And I'm holding my paintbrush the entire time, kind of reminding them I'm in the middle of working. But, um, but they were really nice, and they were very interested in my work, so why not? Anyway, it was a lot of fun. It was very different from my usual Saturdays at the studio. And uh, once they left, I got right to work and got this finished.
So I'm realizing that I really have to decide what I'm going to do about his eye. Like, do I really want to carefully cut out little circles or how much of it do I want it to be paint? I definitely want to get some of those lighter blue colors around his eye. I want to indicate some of that color, um, but I think I'm going to paint most of the eye. And um, so this is me still trying to figure out, you know, how much of it should be mosaic around the eye and how much should be painted. Okay, so now on to the beak. This is like the really fun part, I think, because this is why I chose a toucan, let's face it. There's so many different colors and variations of color, and it's just, you know, one of those uh, really beautiful birds. From what I understand, they're not very nice birds to have, though. A friend of mine had a, a toucan once. She, you know, we got a toucan because she thought how cool looking he, she was a graphic designer and he appealed to her but she quickly realized this is not a good pet so she moved on to um, other large birds like cockatoo and African gray anyway she has very nice birds that are still with her today many many years later and so I did actually play with a toucan once when she had it for the short period of time that she had it. Okay, so there's obviously a little bit of yellow that has to go in here, especially around that orange area. So there's little tiny pieces I have to do. And a lot of that um, very pale teal blue is gonna go in there as well. And even a little tiny bit of white. You can't see on my reference material, but at the very top, there's like a, a, a little bit of white, probably a reflection. But as you can see, I sometimes cut really long, skinny pieces that come to a point. And that helps because that would have been a lot of tiny pieces otherwise. So as you can see, there's like different shades of blue. There's even a little bit of purple, a little bit of that sort of brownish um, rust color, uh, all kinds of shades, including the green.
So this blue area has these like little, it has like a little indication of these pointy things. It's part of the beak. I don't know if it's like uh, grooves or something and it's making a shadow. I'm not exactly sure. Most of the reference material that I found on Toucans all have that. So I'm just like cutting little triangles to sort of indicate that. Not everywhere, but um, and I'm not being so literal with this, but I'm just trying to indicate it anyway in a rough sort of way. That was the most difficult part of this entire process with this particular type of bird. For some reason, when I was making my papers, I did not create the right shade of green. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking, but that green that's in his beak never, never happened. So I had to go through all my other papers and see if I could find something close. And um, that was a big mistake as far as I'm concerned. I don't know how I did that, but it works out in the end. I think these papers from my um, botanical um, video are, are working just fine. Although the texture is a bit different because I'm using, I didn't use stencils like I did on the rest of it. But it works out. So when I was working in this area, I was being careful to keep that black line that separates his um, eye area and the and his chest area from the beak. If you see on the reference photo, there's this this black line that sort of outlines his beak, and I needed to be careful that I kept that, or I was going the whole thing was going to fall apart. So. Sometimes you have to zero in when you're doing mosaic, you're, you're simplifying your, your layout. So you, but you have to look at what's important and you have to keep those details. Okay, so we cannot forget to paint his eye. So I'm starting with a gray, I'm making my circle. It's all about the highlight. So without that highlight, it is not an eye. So I wish I had pulled down the reference so you could see. But anyway, I'm darkening up the area, but then I am going to give it more definition by adding that little bit of white that's going to make that eye sparkle. So it gives him a little twinkle in his eye. makes a big difference. And now he's starting to come to life. I'm really happy with the way his beak is coming out. I still have a lot of work to do, a lot of areas to fill in, little tiny areas to fill in. But I think his eye looks good. I 
And this is definitely the frustrating part where I have to fill in tiny spaces because it's very difficult. Sometimes I wish I had more childlike hands. Um, but we, it's, it's a lot easier with fabric, believe it or not. I do a lot of these paintings with fabric mosaic. And the fabric is just a lot easier to control than the paper. But I love the fact that I can create these, these papers and it, it's so much more exciting in the end to see the piece come to life with papers I created. So in this little edge over here, I, I really, it's important to see, you know, that transition between his, the fur area and his beak. But I also have to get that yellow kind of going down and around the orange area. So, and the nice thing about wood is I could cut the paper right on it. Can't do that on canvas. But that really made a big difference in his beak, I think. It's the details sometimes. I'm getting close to the end. Tiny, tiny little pieces. So I know some of these pieces are so small you can't even barely see what I'm doing. Maybe I will try to zoom in. So as you can see these pieces are starting to get really small. When you get towards the end you're cutting pieces specifically for one spot. It just it becomes very tedious. But um, it's great in the end, so that's why we do what we do. Some of these tiny, tiny pieces make a really big difference. So I, I try not to get too lazy and, and skip this part. Um, a lot of times I think, oh, it looks fine the way it is, but no, it's the tiny, tiny little pieces that really make the shape. So that bottom part of his bodice area, the yellow part, when I added that one little tiny piece, it made a big difference. So I was afraid this was going to be a really long video because it took me two and a half hours just to do the mosaic part of this um, artwork. And so obviously I'm not going to post a two and a half hour video, but um, so I did some speeding up and even cut out a few areas. But I wanted to share the process of that, of what I, what it is that I do with the mosaic. And I hope you enjoyed it. So let's just keep on going. I've got a couple of more tiny little pieces and then it's done. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I am really loving how he came out. Anyway, I just realized I am sitting in front of this other bird who has the same leaf, same leaf. 
anyway, um, that was kind of intentional. I was looking for something and I just said, oh, I did a, I did a macaw that had a leaf. Let me go grab that one. <laughs> I reuse reference material all the time. Thanks again for stopping by. Don't forget to create, inspire, and share. And I will see you next time. I'm really glad he is done. Bye-bye. <laughs>